my god, I'm so excited. I'm here with my chemist friends. Hi. Say hi. Introduce yourselves, ladies. I'm Alex. I am a cosmetic chemist and the co-founder of a skincare line called Educated Mess. My name is Sarah DeWeese. I'm a chemical engineer, but also do product development and owner of Dermwell. Yay! I'm so excited. So a lot of you asked me some Q&As on Instagram, and we are going to answer them all here with my amazing chemist friend. So let's get right into it. Our first question, I know the ladies love this question, beef tallow, debunk please. I'm so sick of hearing I about know, beef tallow. I, know. Wait, I don't know where it came from. It actually from. doesn't have any tool like preventing properties at all. It's where been did debunked completely. Come from that we're putting this on our skin and cooking like Well, it's skin. so interesting because like for so long the vegan movement was the thing in skincare. Now all of a sudden now, we're like, oh my we're... God, but now we gotta be using beef tallow. Yeah. Does beef tallow have any skincare benefits whatsoever? Probably it's rich in fatty acids if I had to guess. That can be very nourishing for the barrier, but it, I mean, but it's not gonna be better than any moisturizer yeah. on the market. And honestly, for me, I don't prefer to get my the, the bulk of my benefits from a natural ingredient because it can vary from batch to batch. It can vary based on the the, the diet of the cow. Or what's in it. What the cow mm -hmm. was eating, what region the cow mm -hmm. was raised in, what like, Absolutely. you know. Does the cow have bugs? <laughs> Does the cow have bugs? Somebody says, I love the feeling of body and face oil. So oils on your face, but I'm scared to use because of clogged pores, please help. So does oil clog your pores? If you're using no. an oil. In not typically. I mean, not, nothing, not yeah. necessarily. There are some that have been proven to be a little bit more likely to, you know, get in there. And yeah. Out. I think they have actually shown that people that are more acne prone typically have a higher profile, like the fatty acid profile of the sebum that their skin naturally produces is mm -hmm. lower in linoleic acid. I used to think that because of my acne, I needed to dry my face out as much as possible. With I thought that too. And stripping. I used to um, see, see, see breeze like 12 times a day. The astringent? No. Oh, so did I. I, was I used Seapreeze, Oxy pads. I thought that the more dry my face was, the, the quicker my acne would clear up. The so, thing is, but you actually like oil to your point does get in and actually helps the sebum in your pore move. Yeah. So sometimes there are oils that do actually help. Certain acne oils could help alter the composition of the sebum your skin is naturally producing yeah. to make it less like gluey almost mm -hmm, like yeah. linoleic acid rich oils are good at that mm -hmm. but here's another really important thing though i used to like think i needed to dry out my skin to get rid of acne but our skin could kind of actually be susceptible to having like a kind of a negative feedback loop almost where it's like oh my god there's no oil i need to produce more yeah so yeah, you, could be, that's very yeah real. you could be causing your skin to like produce more oil yeah um so i love using things like squalane if you love a facial facial oil so if you think about the way a blackhead is formed it's typically when there's oil and stuff gets trapped in your pores mm -hmm. and it oxidizes so the ingredients like squalane are great oil that do not contain an oxidizable double bond so you're almost replacing the skin or like you're kind of putting oil there that's not going to be susceptible to oxidation yeah i think that's a really good one to use interesting right. and i think like to your point antioxidant oils yes like oils that also have antioxidants astaxanthin look for astaxanthin oh. really good for oil, yeah. like acne prone skin yeah. Here's a good routine question. I actually get asked this all the time and we'll ask my chemist friends too. If you're using azelaic acid, there's a lot of brands coming out with like 10% azelaic yeah. acid for brightening, for redness in particular. If you're gonna use this azelaic acid, just the azelaic acid, how are you gonna use it in your skincare routine? The really high prescription strength, like the 10%, mm -hmm. I actually like to use that at night. Yeah. Um, because it is it is slightly strong. It, it does irritate, it can irritate a little. I like to use it at night too. Prescription strength, I think is 15, 15. 15. Yeah. Um, um, Over the counter, there is 10%. Like the ordinary has a 10%, okay. peach slices has a 10%. I think there's a problem. I've never read anything that azelaic acid and chart no one I think the question is, would the azelaic acid come before or after the vitamin C or so, before and after the retinoid? Typically, azelaic acid is very difficult to formulate with, yep. so you typically mm. have a very creamy texture. Yep. You have to have emulsifiers in there. Uh -huh. As a rule of thumb, I just typically, I don't know if this is a psychological thing, I start with my wateriest products and yep. go to my oiliest. Um, in my opinion, it just, in my mind, that's how I just see it better. But your how ingredients it, are going to typically get normal, where they need to go. How is a normal consumer going to know? Uh, wateriest to oiliest. Most people know thinnest to clear, thickest. Clear, clear water. To thickest, yeah, would still apply here. Right? Yeah, like if it's if it's runny. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think actually for me, it's I, I typically say like your water based serums are going to be transparent because you mm -hmm. don't have the opposing um, what's the refractive index from the oil versus the water combined together to make it milky. So I would typically say like the clearest to the most milky to the yeah, creamiest. That's a great the rule of except, great rule of thumb. except straight up oils are typically clear too because then that's just one thing. So if it's an oil, use that last. But in general, guys, you don't need to be that serious with it because your ingredients are typically gonna get where they need to here's, go. Yes. Here's a wild one that I kind of do. I like to put as far as my products go, I do pay attention to like thickest thin 
thickest, the thickest mm -hmm. but like I also pay attention to what do I want to treat most. Yeah. I love that. So like yeah. I am going into a really heavy outdoor day or like I, I want to deal with like antioxidant protection. I'll put my vitamin C on first and then I put my azelaic acid on first. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, sometimes I do that. I love that. What's what's the most important for yeah. you to go on your clean, dry skin, yeah. right? Are expensive peptide serums worth it? Alex just came out with a peptide serum. And I've also done videos ripping on some expensive peptide yes, serums. Yes, she has. There. Now your peptide serum is kind of mid-range. It's the $90, yeah, it's like $90 range. I think that's a great there, price. It's, it's a great really price. Too. Now there are some peptide serums that I've seen for as high as $250. And there are some peptide serums I've seen for about 30 bucks. So how do you know that one is better than the other? And peptides are kind of a new ingredient yeah. that people are talking about anyway, that people are just asking me, do I even need peptides? And I'm like, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. But, yeah. but how do you know whether to buy the $30 one or the $250 Honestly, one? Honestly, I wish it was so easy to tell you guys, like these ingredients are good, these are bad. Um, or not, not bad, but like, that's hard. it's hard. Yeah. But so for me, what justifies the $95 price point of ours is the fact that we are using very expensive, new, innovative peptide delivery systems. Now the ones right. in like SkinCeuticals, PTIOX, honestly, those two peptides are also in the ordinary buffet. The way that peptides have evolved over the years, like when they first came out, those two peptides, what are they? Was a, 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 I think it's Argyrolene and Sinek. Yes. If I see the same two peptides everywhere, I do expect that to be a little bit like Less more cost effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. than something that is brand new technology. Yeah. Like can you mass. can you guys name a couple of lower price point peptides for our friends yes. maybe that you actually like? Naturia multi-peptide serum, not the moisturizer, the, the serum, very good. They're using targeted delivery systems to copper peptides and one designed to help target expression lines. Geek and Gorgeous peptide. You love Geek. That you one love is that so one. good. I've, ne I've never tried it. It's I really good. I, I, I should have brought you some. It's okay. really good. Okay. It's very cost effective. They're using advanced delivery systems as well. Stradia Interface is a good one. Okay. Um, if that one's, I think, more, I think Stratia Interface is a little bit better for barrier, um, in my opinion, but all of these are in like the 20 to $30 price range. Um, if I you would don't say, spend though, time. I think that I'm, I'm not even like saying this bias though. Like, yeah. I think if you can afford the Educated Mess yeah. one, I think you're going to be really, 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 really happy with the results. I think that's right on the cost threshold of like a serum, a peptide serum that's worth it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Appreciate is there it. anything in the over 200 range that's actually worth it? At that point, I start to get a little funny because it's like if I'm buying two, if I'm buying a $200 serum every six weeks, yeah. I would just get filler or Botox, even though I haven't gotten filler or Botox because I'm scared of needles, but I'm saying like yeah. from a cost standpoint. I mean, and that's a great, that's a great point too. I say when people tell me that they, you know, what's a $400 serum I should buy? I say, get a, get a yearly laser treatment. Yeah. I'm doing more yes. for collagen yes. producing with a yearly laser, laser treatment, treatment yes. four hundred dollars. I serum. think like those are fine products though as well. So like if you have the budget, if you have it, the budget, there are sure. some. Now if I'm gonna actually recommend something above like one fifty to two hundred dollars. You know, there are some brands that have proprietary technology and I can appreciate that like all of the money that went into the R&D to discover this new ingredient yeah. and discover what it is. For instance, K18 for hair. Very cool, oh, very innovative, it's so good. Nothing like it, it's, it's so worth good. it. It's so good, it's so good. It's worth it to me. Yeah. But um, you know, when you're looking at peptide serums that don't have anything that other brands can't use, I, you know? Yeah. And also there are some, even though that I can appreciate that they've had to spend a lot of money on R&D, so it's like, okay, I can see why you're charging $200 for this yeah. product. There are some times that like, that actually is not an, it's not a benefit that the consumer actually receives. Yeah. So you're paying for you're paying for something that yeah. the background. That's really yeah. interesting. Exosomes, oh, so yay or nay? And if yay, any specific product doing it best? First of all, what are exosomes and why are people I going think, wild for them? Okay, so exosomes I, are like. I think that I want to say real quick. I think that people are a little confused about what yeah. exosome means because of the way it's been marketed. So you I know. agree. Yeah. So I totally agree. Yeah. Like I think yay, but not for the reasons that you guys yes. think. Exosomes are carrier molecules, so they take information in this inside of them. Yeah. They're the little balls. Think of it as an envelope. Yeah. Yeah. They are circular though. A circular, yeah. circular, a circular envelope, envelope. Yeah. that takes information and brings it to other cells to activate them to make okay. them do something. Okay. The reason I think we're using them now. And we've used things that are very, I'm gonna about to get really nerdy with this, but get we've nerdy. used like carrier delivery systems. Like liposomes. Like liposomes. Exactly. Yeah. Anything that mimics the phospholipid bilayer in skin. Exactly. Is we've okay. been using liposomes forever. Yeah. Exosomes are just what you find in actual living beings. So you can find them in plants, you can find them in people, right. everything. I think they become really cool because everyone hears that we have them in our body yeah. and that they have this really cool technical okay. like name around them, but yeah. really they're just a delivery system. Yeah. But here's the thing, what I think people are getting a little confused about is, okay, a lot of the exosome products I see also contain like sponge spicules. 
So the thing with sponge spicules is those are like the little baby micro needles that are in a product that you apply and you can start to feel. Now oh. I have seen a study that if you take epidermal growth factor, EGF, and you put it in an exosome and then load that exosome onto the sponge spicules, it does improve the delivery and the benefits you get yeah. from the epidermal growth factor. So, so it makes sense. Like exosomes are cool. The way that people are consuming that information, if you have the exosome on a spicule, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think exosomes don't actually do anything for your skin. It's what's inside that exosome yeah, that matters. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. I will say- But it can't have the nothing, delivery, so will the sponges. Nothing has ever irritated me more in my life than the things that have the- the little the pointing spicules. on them. I will turn bright. I will need hydrocortisone are, immediately. I can use I it. I struggle with those products. Oh my god, I love it. They hurt me so bad, especially really? the ones I under do. the eyes. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I can't do that. They the hurt. Eyes. Why aren't beauty products required to state when they include allergens? You, you have to disclose have the all the ingredients yeah. on the ingredient label. You do include the, the ingredients are on there. If soy is in the product, it's on the ingredient. It says. I it's would it's say most maybe every, they mean an al allergy warning. I mean, do they do? Mm. Most every ingredient though that like is gonna cause an allergic reaction in somebody out there. So it'd yeah. be really, like you would always have to have like a full like Rolodex. Like, yeah. Like disclaimer. a whole page of just like, Everything okay, this contains could this could be, I'm sensitive to certain preservative that's in most things, mm -hmm. but I don't like expect for brands yes, to put, exactly. you know, contains a potential, almost everything would be a potential allergen at a, a given concentration. I mean, yeah, honestly, that comes from the food movement and that's not even really a requirement in foods and restaurants. Yeah. Like they're just doing that as a courtesy. Yeah. To your point, yeah. that would be way too much on a bottle. Yeah, and like yeah. There, there's always gonna be a new one that comes out. Somebody's like, oh my God, this caused this reaction. Like, But you can see if it does contain soy, if you look at that ingredient list, you will see it. You will see there. it, yeah. yeah. When you're shipping skincare in hot weather, do the formulas get affected by heat exposure? Well, I wanna add to that yeah. too. I was just on a trip and I kept my skincare in my car for eight hours and in my little bag, and it was 100 degrees outside, and I swear to God, my skincare was like, it was weird. It was not, what about hot temperatures in skincare? Sure, so you know, it's really, it's, it's a great question, and I'm glad that people are starting to think about yeah. this, but yeah. this is actually something that we do take into account when formulating. And you do. Stability testing, and yep. you do expose oh. it to a very high, like I think it's 100 and 40 degrees <gasps> Fahrenheit. So the that's thing is, what you, but for how long do you expose? Three months. Wow. So your products go under testing for three months at 140 degree Fahrenheit. There are some that show separation yeah. and brands will still yeah. sign off that like they that's can use the, the issue. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, but, but how about, so my products that were in my car for eight hours and they were hot as can be when I came back, they're still okay to use. As long as they've done stability testing during development and it passed. Yes. But you'll know, wow. you'll know if it doesn't because it'll start to separate because basically if it's a cream with an emulsion you've got oil and water ingredients together held together with emulsifiers a lot of these emulsifiers you got to get them hot to make the product but if you get it hot a second time you're not going to reform the emulsion properly it's going to separate and fall apart and you're never going to get it back to normal now people say sometimes the issue is like they order from amazon sellers they don't know or they order from random places online and they get it and it's separated and it's messed up and i'm like maybe they weren't held in temperature controlled facilities or, or it was not the actual it's product. not the real product. yeah it's not the so, real product yeah no so real like brands that are reputable we do do that testing we also do freeze thaw testing yeah, freeze so thaw. we do the opposite we'll put our products through oh, really really cool temperatures and like back and forth to see yeah. if it freezes and thaws and if things come out of it if it's stable so tell tell everybody if you're going to order skincare online and you order either brand direct i always recommend ordering recommend from the brand's that, yeah. website if you're not going to order brand direct they're out where do you recommend ordering from? What are some trusted websites? I like Derm, 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 Sephora, honestly, if you want to do yeah. Sephora. I do want to say something too real quick about like, there's an interesting thing about like products getting hot. Like for instance, certain retinol ingredients that I order to use in a formulation in the lab, I'm dealing with this right now from a supplier. They're sending it in this like cooler incubator thing to make sure that the retinol does not get exposed to too high of a temperature. And granted, I'm not going to be sending out product. If I develop a formula with this ingredient, I'm not putting it in an incubator and a yeah. cooler to yeah. send to the customer. So you do have to like kind of work with the overall formulation to protect the retinol in the formula. So typically a chemist will do some, you know, some things to make sure that the ingredient is staying stable. But there are certain ingredients that are heat sensitive and you wouldn't want them to be left out in the, in the heat. But those do require like by regulation, they do require that like disclaimer. That disclaimer, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if you're gonna, if it's gonna be something that you can't expose to temperature, you'll know it because it'll be in the package. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys so much. This was so fun and we'll do another video again. Yeah, Say bye. bye. bye.